Welcome! In this video, we're going to introduce how to add test reporting to your Android Appium test. You can add similar features to either the Android Mobile Emulator test or the Android App Emulator test. To start out, make a copy of the test you would like to add these features to. We'll be doing the app test for this example. Copy and paste it into the test directory. You'll also need to make a copy of the testng XML file. Name both of them Mobile Android Emulator Reporting Test. Once you make a copy of the XML file, be sure to add the correct class. The first thing you'll do is add a test name that will report to Sauce Labs. You'll go to the setup method in the before method annotation. We're going to be using the Java method class You'll be using Reflection to gather information about this. You'll have to import the Java Lang Reflection method. If you look at the top, it should be added to your imports list, or you can type it in yourself. Create a method name variable, which will use Reflection to gather information about the name of the test method you're passing into the setup. The last thing you need to do is simply add the capability to pass the name to the Sauce Labs dashboard. Check to make sure that your POM XML is updated so you're running the correct test class, and you can run the command maven clean test and see your test run on Sauce Labs, this time with the name passed in for each one of the tests. Now what you're going to do is go into the after method annotation and update the teardown method there. We're going to name it the reporting test so we know the difference when we see the logs and add in iTestResult from the TestNG library, grabbing the result of the test that's running. You'll need to import it at the top. iTestResult allows you to take the result of the assertion in your test and pass that information on to Sauce Labs. We're going to need to restructure this method a little bit, however. We're going to add in a try finally statement that will first check to make sure that the driver isn't null, or in other words, that it's been instantiated. We'll take the driver quit method and put it inside the finally statement, so no matter what happens, any drivers running are quit. Next, we need to use something called JavaScript Executor to pass information in the form of an HTTP request to Sauce Labs. JavaScript Executor will take the driver and check for the Boolean condition for the Sauce job result as being passed or failed. If it's passed or there's a true statement with your assertion, it will pass that onto Sauce Labs and you'll see that the test is passed in your dashboard. If not, you'll see a failed status. Add a print line in the finally statement so you know that your code has gotten to the place where it releases the driver and quit. Now if you run your test using the command Maven Clean Test, you should see your test start running. If you switch to the Sauce Labs dashboard, You'll see your test run. As your tests run and complete, instead of seeing a completed statement on the far right, you should see a passed or fail status. You can also see whether it was succeeded or just completed by hovering over the icon next to the test name. There you go. We added in two elements to pass in the test name as well as the test status. Stay tuned to learn a little bit more about app testing and how to run in parallel in the next module.